Hi, this is Paul Palmer. Today I'm going to talk about causal relationships. So what does that mean? Well, in pharmaceuticals, when we do a root cause analysis, we're looking for why something happens. So that's a causal relationship. So you have something that goes wrong, and then you want to work out why it went wrong. So the root cause. So you're investigating why something happens. Now the reason this comes to mind at the moment is the changes that are happening around with relation to the pandemic. Now, people are looking at the numbers and they're thinking, well, what caused that number to change? Maybe it's the lockdown or maybe it's something else. So, for example, in London recently, there's been some issues, some problems because there was a street party uh, and the police um, were sent in and there was some there was a disturbance and, and, and some people got hurt. You could say that that street party was caused by the lockdown. Maybe it was. But the actual party itself wasn't organized because of the lockdown. So maybe the disturbance, maybe the, the um, influence of the police and the, the violence was caused by the lockdown. Was it really? Or was that caused by the rules that were put in place? Um, and the, 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 I don't know, the, the, the controls, the, the police enforcement action. Now, another example. So, I go into a clean room and I find some contamination. Well, that contamination could be caused by somebody going into the room and not following the correct aseptic technique. So, maybe we do some tests and we find a similar organism on, on one of the staff that's been in there maybe on the hat finger dabs. So you could say, okay, we'll retrain them and this will solve the problem. And you're saying that the root cause is them not cleaning properly. But a causal relationship isn't necessarily so clear. There may be other influencing factors. Say you've identified to a specific species level and it could be that you've got that contamination in the raw material as well as from the person that just happens to have handled the raw material. So the causal relationship you've identified is they had the contamination, they had the infection, they had the, the microbe on their dabs. But what you didn't consider was what was their previous actions? Where, would, where have they been? What activity have they been involved in? They've been involved in the manufacture and handling the raw material that's got a significant level of contamination with a certain microorganism. So, for example, um, raw materials that are of natural origin, something like guar gum, has a really high microbial count when it comes in. And it's accepted at a high level. And because it's accepted at a high level, you use pasteurization in your process to remove that level of contamination. So, talking about causal relationships, when you're investigating, Take a wider view. Look at the different opportunities, the different options, the sources, where it could be. Don't just think, oh, well, this is a good one, so we'll choose that and we'll fix that problem because we found a problem. It may be that there's three problems and one of them just is incidentally similar to what the problem that you found that you're trying to fix. It may be that you've got seven different contributory factors and only when they come together is when you have the issue. Now I'm not talking about microbiological contamination. It may be a seal integrity problem with your product. Maybe you're producing a sterile finished product. Maybe it's terminally sterilized or maybe it's um, aseptic manufacture. And you've got multiple things that happen maybe once every three months. And those things happening together could be the item that actually causes the failure. But you don't know that unless you look at the entirety of the process the manufacturing process the way things are prepared the way people are trained the understanding of that training the way things are documented the way that your process has been validated your machines your calibration is your calibration criteria correct is the spec specification of your um, filling um, machine correct is the specification of your components that you're filling into correct i had one uh, so a number of years ago where the actual tub that you're filling into 
and the lid had conflicting specifications. Now, most of the time, they're acceptable, one locked onto the other. But if the container was larger than the lid, the lid wouldn't fit on top properly. So the automatic mechanism went to a point where it stopped. But as it relaxed, it caused a seal integrity failure. And the aseptic filled product consistently failed. And what we found was there's an overlap in the specification. So rather than it going one on top of the other, there was an integration in between and it made it fail. It wasn't a simple screw, it's a lockdown cap. So put, forcing it on hard, it went on, but it came off in a number of cases. Not every case, so the manual checks had passed in some cases, but the seal integrity testing and the um, process simulation failed. Okay, so be careful when you're looking at causal relationships. What might appear to be the root cause in the first instance may be a contributory factor, or it may be a complete, um, something that's completely irrelevant, but you don't know that until you test and you look further and you consider all the opportunities that it could be, all the options, and maybe resolve them all. It's part of a risk assessment, for example. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks, Paul Palmer. Bye-bye.